All right, in the next video, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about solving rational inequalities. So um, solving rational inequalities is fairly similar to solving rational equations, but, you know, it's going to be a bit different. So um, these are problems we're not going to solve just yet. I am going to do some examples, but these are examples of rational inequalities. You have a rational function, which again is a polynomial over a polynomial. There's some sort of inequality, and you know, you've got either a number or another rational um, expression floating around. So this would be considered a rational inequality. Um, the second one would also be considered a rational inequality. And then this bottom one would also be considered a rational inequality. So briefly, I just want to talk about the techniques you use to solve these things. Okay, and the first thing, the idea is you're going to want a single fraction, and this is a rational function, a polynomial over a polynomial. That's what this notation means. You've got a single fraction, you've got zero on the other side, and then you have an inequality in there. Okay, it doesn't have to be less than, which is what I'm trying to say here. So maybe it's greater than, greater than, or equal to, or less than or equal to. But the thing you have to have is a single fraction, zero, and inequality in the middle. So that's what I'm trying to say here on the next part. This is what you want it to look like. A single fraction, one of these four types of inequalities, and then zero on the other side. Once you have that, the way that you go about solving it is roughly you set the top equal to zero and solve that. You figure out what values of x make the bottom zero. Once you have those, you're going to make a number line and then from our number line we're going to test points. Okay, so let's make some sense out of all this. So let's do the first one first here. So suppose we have this rational inequality x plus excuse me, x minus four over x plus two greater than zero. Okay, so now it's already in this good form like we were just talking about where you have to have a single fraction some sort of inequality in zero. So I've already got that. And what we do is we figure out what values of x make the top zero. So I set the top equal to zero and I get x equals four. I figure out what values make the bottom equal to zero. Well that'll give me x equals negative two. And now what I do is, is I make a number line. Okay, so I'm gonna put negative two in there. I'm gonna put positive four in there. And now you have to test these numbers. So if I plug negative 2 into my inequality, if I plug negative 2 in, on the bottom I'm going to get 0. And dividing by 0 is undefined. So you're not even going to get a number on the left side. So whatever you get on the left, that can't be greater than 0. So we'll indicate that negative 2 doesn't satisfy this inequality with an open circle. If we plug positive 4 in, on top I will get 0, on the bottom I'll get 6. Well 0 over 6 is 0. Again I'm plugging 4 in for x. Well 0 over 6 is 0, but 0 is not greater than 0, so we'll put an open circle to indicate that that doesn't work. Okay, unfortunately we're not done yet. Now we'll have to take a number from each interval and plug it into our inequality. So maybe I'll start with the rightmost first. Maybe I'll plug in x equals 5. And if I plug 5 into the top, I'll get 5 minus 4, which is 1. If I plug 5 into the bottom, I'll get 7. That'll give me a positive number, a positive over a positive. And a positive is greater than 0, so those numbers are all going to work for us. If I take a number between negative 2 and 4, maybe I use the value x equals 0 can take any number between negative 2 and 4. Notice if I plug 0 in, it's going to have the effect of just getting rid of the x's. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 is not greater than 0, so we don't shade in the middle part. Okay, so those values don't work. Then I take a number smaller than negative 2. Maybe I use x equals negative 3. Notice if I plug negative 3 into the top, I'll get negative 3 minus 4. I'll get a negative number. If I plug negative 3 into the bottom, I'll get another negative number. So I'll get a negative divided by a negative, which makes a positive number. 
a positive number is greater than zero, so those values would also work. So we can write our solution to this first problem in interval notation. It's everything from negative whoops, infinity up to negative two, open parentheses because we don't include the two, excuse me, the negative two. And u stands for union, so it's this basically or this for two infinity. That would be our solution in interval notation. Okay. So this next problem is going to be the same idea here, except now I don't have zero on one side, so I need to make one side equal to zero. So the way I'm going to make it equal to zero is I'm going to subtract this whole five over x minus three term. So I'm going to subtract it from both sides, which is just going to have the effect of moving it over to the left side. Well, I've got common denominators, which is good, because now I can write this as a single fraction. And I just do the arithmetic on the top. One minus five is negative four. And now you do the same thing. You figure out what values of x you can plug in that will make the top part of the fraction zero. Well, there's no x's there, so there's nothing that's going to make the top part equal to zero. But notice if you plug three into the denominator, you'll get zero. So that's going to be the only point we have to plug onto our number line. Again, if you plug negative, or excuse me, if you plug three back into our inequality, you're going to be dividing by zero again, which is undefined. So that automatically doesn't work. And now I have to take a number smaller than three. Maybe again, I'll use x equals zero. Notice if I plug zero in, it's going to just have the effect of getting rid of the x. I'll have negative four over negative three, which is going to give me a positive number. But a positive number is not less than or equal to zero. So that stuff doesn't work. Let me take something bigger than three. Maybe I'll use x equals five. If I plug five into the bottom, I'll get five minus three, which is two. So I'll have negative four on top. Um, we said negative, excuse me, positive two on the bottom. Well, negative four over negative two is a negative two. And negative two is less than or equal to zero. So all the numbers bigger than three work. So our solution to our original inequality up here, it says it's going to be all numbers that are bigger than three. And that's how we can write this interval um, that we shaded in in interval notation. I had one more planned here. I don't know if I can squeeze it in real quick. Maybe we can at least set it up, um, at least get you started. So on this one, I've got 1 over x less than or equal to 2 over x plus 1. Well, the same idea. I've got to make a single fraction on one side and a 0 on the other. Well, on this one, I'm going to have to get common denominators. So on the left side, the 1 over x, I'll have to multiply top and bottom by x plus 1, x plus 1. And then for the other fraction, I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by just x. And then I'll have my common denominator, less than or equal to 0. Okay, and now what I have to do is just write this as a single fraction. So in the denominator, I'm going to have x x plus 1. In the top, I'm going to have 1x minus 2x, which is negative x. But then I'll have a positive 1, less than or equal to 0. So this is good. I've now got it as a single fraction. Ooh, sorry about that. It's getting dark outside. Trying to bright it up here a little bit. Um, I've got it now being a single fraction. So if I put this on a number line, again, the stuff that's going to make the bottom equal to 0 will be 0. It looks like negative 1 is also going to give us a 0 on the bottom. And it looks like positive 1 is going to give us a 0 on the top. OK, so I'm running out of time. The 10-minute YouTube limit's going to kick in here. So the same idea. You're going to have to check negative 1. You're going to have to check 0. You're going to have to check positive 1. And then you're just going to have to take a number in between each of those numbers and check it back in your inequality. So. Try this one out, see if it works. If you get stuck, send me an email. Um, I'll finish it off in another problem if you need me to. But just use these same ideas that we were doing in the others. 
So if you need to see some more algebra stuff or rational equations, just take a look at my website. If you've got any questions, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to answer them.